Okay, this video is called Abdominal Pressure Syndrome. We'll start with a question. What is the only th good thing about the Paleo Keto diet? Answer, you save a lot of money on toilet paper because they're always constipated. Um, that's kind of the whole point of abdominal pressure syndrome is constipation leads to tons of problems. I'm going to show you a picture of all the complications of abdominal pressure syndrome in just one second. Real quick, here's a quick pyramid of food, what I recommend with the so-called Spartan vegan diet, which is really, you know, my diet, if you will. You know, it's essentially the same sort of thing as McDougal diet or Esselstyn diet. On the bottom, you know, these are the social things that make you more resilient and healthy and stronger. Getting your sunshine, vitamin D, adequate sleep, avoiding caffeine, managing your stress. Religion makes people healthier. It's a major improver of health. Modern world tries to criticize it, but you study it, you'll be amazed how much it helps people. Also increases creativity um, and perspective. Exercise, aerobic and uh, endurance strength and physical strength. Uh, family, friends, good relationship. You see that in all the blue zones. Starches should be the majority of your calories. Sweet potato is probably the healthiest food in the world. It's only 1% fat, 4.5% protein. That's like perfect. Potatoes are about 8 or 9% protein, also 1% fat. Rice is 1% fat. So the point is, if you eat these foods, you're going to be skinny. If you get most of your calories from these types of foods, you're going to be skinny. Starch makes people skinny and healthy. Uh, beans are good, but they got tons of protein, so you got to be a little bit careful with them. Uh, oatmeal is great. It's a little bit fatter, about 16% fat. Quinoa is similar to oatmeal, a little more protein, less fat. Fruits are great, but they're kind of expensive. They don't store so well. Veggies are great. Um, vitamin B12 is the only thing you end up needing to supplement for uh, whole food vegans. Okay, now we're going to get to the abdominal pressure syndrome stuff. When you say the word abdominal pressure syndrome, doctors don't know it. I can tell you I've, I've trained tons of medical students, and I've spoken with tons of resident and attending physicians. Um, and, I, and this includes the highest of the high physicians. They don't know this. This is so simple and basic, but they're never taught this. It's not in any medical school textbook that I've ever seen. The surgeons don't even know this, okay? I've had uh, people going into surgery, they don't know this. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm going to bet you some of the good surgeons, they finally figure this out and they read about it. But Dennis Burkett had figured this all out back in the 1960s, and once you see it, it's so obvious. Typically, if you ask a surgeon, do they know abdominal pressure syndrome, they're going to give you a confused look, and they're going to go, well, abdominal compartment syndrome, which is an emergency situation in the intensive care unit where they put a Foley catheter in the bladder, check the pressure, potentially have to do a decompressive laparotomy surgery, open up the belly. That's not what we're talking about. That's a, an acute emergency situation in an ICU. We are talking about chronic constipation, and I can tell you, there's not a day goes by that every single radiologist that reads abdominal CTs sees this all day long. The majority of patients over 50 years of age in the United States have this. So what is it? Constipation causes increased straining and defecation. Increased straining causes dilation of the veins in the rectum. Those are called rectal hemorrhoids. The back pressure is transmitted into the sigmoid colon, which is right next to the rectum, really. And you get these little bulgings of uh, bowel outward at weak spots in the sigmoid colon, and those bulges are called uh, diverticuli, or ticks, and the disease is called diverticulosis. By itself, it's not a big deal, but eventually, some of these patients um, with this chronic constipation for decades, they'll pop one of these diverticuli, and then stool will spill out onto the mesenteric fat, that's the fat adjacent to the bowel, and that will cause intense painful inflammation. And um, that will, <laughs> Uh, need to be treated typically with antibiotics if there's an abscess you can usually do a catheter drainage of it but it just sometimes becomes so extensive the patients have to have surgery a lot of patients go for sigmoid resection for treatment of recurrent or severe diverticulitis um, in addition what does fiber do with regard to defecation well fiber pulls fluid water into the stool it makes the stool liquid when you look at an abdominal cat scan you should see liquefied stool on the right side of the colon liquefied stool is what you want normally you should be pooping anywhere from about you know three times on average three times to about five times a day you know typically on a work day you're going to be a little more stressed out you're only going to poop two or three times on a relaxed day, day off at home, you're probably going to poop about four or five times. It depends, but in that ballpark, okay? So, And the poop should be like a cow patty if you're eating a reasonable amount of fiber. Uh, a diet deficient in fiber, like processed food, meat food diets, standard American diet, all that stuff, 
they're going to tend to poop out little goat pellets or Tootsie Roll hard uh, log like little stools. Okay, now when you've got dry stool on the right side of the colon due to a lack of fiber, no fiber to pull water into the colon, you'll form little rocks of stool. Um, when a rock is formed, like they give you the location and lith. Lith means stone. A pentacle lith means stone in the appendix, and it means a stool ball. Okay, it's also called a fecal lith. Feca for feces and lith for stone, and that will block the proximal part of the appendix. Proximal just means closer to the heart, towards the center of the body. Um, and then the distal appendix has mucus glands that will continue to secrete mucus, but the mucus can't get into the remainder of the colon, into the cecum over here, so this will pop, and that's appendicitis. And once again, when a bowel pops, perforates, you spill stool into the abdominal cavity, into the adjacent fat called the mesenteric fat. Incredibly painful. It can be really dangerous, too, because the stool ke can keep on leaking out. You can end up with abscesses all over the, babe, all over the belly. I had to do uh, sometimes seven different abscess drainages, you know, cascade guided uh, percutaneous drainages with uh, placement of catheters, like seven abscesses in these appendicitis patients. And uh, so also they can go into septic shock, have the infection spread to the blood, and die. Uh, so, anyways, pentacle lift causing appendicitis due to lack of uh, fiber. So, persons who eat a high plant food diet, they hardly ever get any of this type of stuff, whereas meat and uh, Junk food eaters, they get a lot of this type of stuff, appendicitis and diverticulitis. Okay, what else happens? Straining at the stool, defecation, that tightening of the abdominal muscles to, to push out a dry, hard poop is called valsalva maneuver, and that valsalva maneuver increases abdominal pressure. It'll push the top of the stomach into the chest. The area where the stomach normally meets with the esophagus is called the um, diaphragmatic hiatus. So to pop a hernia above that is called a hiatal hernia, above the hiatus. Typically, you'll get gastroesophageal reflux, meaning the gastric stomach acid refluxes upward into the hiatal hernia, and that's called GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Over time, it injures the epithelium, the lining cells of the hiatal hernia, and they undergo what is called metaplasia, which means a negative transformation, in a sense, to protect themselves, and that is called Barrett's esophagus. And that's a pre-malignant sign. When a person has that, it means they're at increased risk for development of esophageal cancer in that area. When I was a young man, people used to get what's called smoker-drinker cancer, but now they tend to get more adenocarcinoma from gastroesophageal reflux, just a different type of cells causing the cancer due to the different cause of it. Um, what else is interesting? The back pressure also is transmitted downward into the scrotum in men, and they can get dilatation of the scrotal veins, and that is called a varicocele. And that varicocele can heat up the testicles and cause infertility. So yes, it is true. Chronic constipation can cause infertility. Um, in addition, the back pressure is transmitted to the veins of the leg. Femur means like the thigh bone, and so the vein that goes over that area is called the femoral vein. And that back pressure is transmitted and can cause, on such a chronic basis, it can blow out some of the veins in uh, the valves in the little veins in the leg and cause varicose veins. So women tend to find that more interesting. Um, what else is interesting about it? It's associated with increased incidence of gallstones and basically associated with increased incidence of, of atherosclerosis. Same patients will have a calcified abdominal aorta, increased risk of abdominal aorta aneurysm. The atherosclerosis in the abdominal aorta will be transmitted back to the spine and they'll have um, accelerated degenerative disc disease of the spine and back pain. You look at the same CAT scan on the coronal view where you can see the heart on the same picture as the abdomen, and you'll see calcifications in the coronary arteries. And so that's what I basically say. You know, if you don't become a vegan by the time you're 50, you're kind of screwed for your health. The sooner the better. And don't get me wrong. People have made great recoveries when they go down that path. But I'm just saying, it's, it's obvious. All of this stuff all goes together, and it's all bad. Um, and there's like more than 30 ways that meat increases the risk of uh, uh, cancer. So anyways... That's what abdominal pressure syndrome is. Oh, it also, by the chronic increase of abdominal pressure, can pop out a, um, a hernia down here in the inguinal region. So that's called an inguinal hernia. And so these are all just from being constipated. The patient does not have to be fat at all. Uh, so anyways, that is abdominal pressure syndrome. And what do you do to avoid it? Get, eat more fiber. Fiber comes from plant foods. Fiber comes from plant foods because the cell wall of a plant in all of its cells is stabilized by fiber. Okay. Um, what stabilizes the cell wall, which we don't even have a cell wall in human cells and mammalian cells. We have a plasma membrane only, and the plasma membrane stabilized by cholesterol in it. So when you eat meat, you always get cholesterol, whereas when you eat a plant food, you always get fiber. 
Typical American males are probably only eating about 15 grams a day of fiber, female about 12 grams a day of fiber. In reality, it's said that the minimum requirement for a, an adult woman's about 25 grams of fiber, for a man about 38 grams of fiber. Dennis Burkett says we really normally should be eating at least 100 grams of fiber. And by the way, I looked at my diet, I eat, routinely eat 100 grams or more a day of fiber. So if you're eating the whole food plant-based diet, you're gonna get plenty of fiber. Uh, so anyways, that's abdominal pressure syndrome, easy to avoid, eat more fiber. And it's better, oh, one last thing, it's better to eat the real fiber in the plant food, because I got friends, doctors are asking me, can I just have a couple spoonfuls of Metamucil? Yeah, you can, but you're better off getting the fiber in your food. The fiber wraps around the starch, the glucose polymer that then gets slowly absorbed into the blood, and it creates the effect of like a slow release, time release capsule, if you will, of letting the glucose slowly come into the blood. So you don't have it all coming in as a bolus leading to a spike of blood sugar and a rebound hypoglycemia effect because the pancreas tends to overcompensate. So what am I saying? It's a lot better just eat the real food. That's what you're made to do and it works better.